Good morning, everybody. Dear Professor Christian Leumann, Rector of the University of Bern, dear Alec von Grafenried, Mayor of Bern, distinguished guests, dear IPTAD participants, welcome to Bern, welcome to the University of Bern, and welcome to IPTAD 2022 on site. <laughs> After two years of pure online program delivery due to the pandemic, we are so happy to have you all with us joining from around the world in those turbulent times for a unique experience of learning and networking during the next two weeks. My name is Stephanie Krapp, I'm head of program and I will guide you through the next one and a half hours of this welcome session. I would like to extend a warm welcome to our guests from Swiss organizations. This is Reto Tönen of the Evaluation Corporate Controlling Division of the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. Reto? Ah, there. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you to have you with us. And it's Matthias Rigli of the Evaluation Department of the Swiss Federal Audit Office. Matthias, welcome. Christian Röfli and Simon Ledermann representing the board of the Swiss Evaluation Society. Hello, welcome. <laughs> and a warm welcome to colleagues from various university departments. All of them showed their support for IPDED one way or the other over the past years, so thank you for being with us this morning for the 2020 IPDED opening. After 2018 and 2019, IPDED is delivered for the third time in Bern. Like everybody else, we have been heavily affected by the pandemic. After we overcame our frustration, we tried to use the time wisely and pushed ourselves to create an innovative virtual program in 2020 and 2021. The highlight was definitely in 2020 with the world's first evaluation hackathon. Anybody here who participated in the hackathon? Yes, good, <laughs> great. We also invested quite a lot in providing online trainings with tailored digital tools, didactics, and methods. And because IPTED is targeting institutional and systemic change, which goes beyond developing individual capacity, the program has been expanded to include global outreach activities. So, for example, with parliamentarians and parliamentarian staff to show them how they can use evaluation for their parliamentarian work. This workshop mini-series, which we conducted con together with the Global Parliamentarian Forum and the Asian Pacific Evaluation Association, was met with such great interest and overwhelming demand that it will be continued next year in Asia and other regions on site. And we have some people here who participated and, and participated in the organizing of this uh, series. So Hatiti and colleagues, where are you? Good to have you with us, great. It was, it was a very, very exciting um, event, actually. So in order to further strengthen the IPDET community and thereby to contribute to the further development of the field of evaluation, we offer a variety of online activities, like the virtual program kickoff and closing, online social events. We created the IPDET e-learning platform, which supports joint learning, and the IPDET Cosmos provides a place for virtual exchange. We are dedicated to evaluation capacity development as an essential factor to the increasingly complex requirements of evaluation. Especially in light of the SDGs, the global climate change, crises and wars all over the world, it is more important than ever to develop individual and institutional capacities to conduct, commission and use high quality evaluations including strengthening the role of the civil society in demanding, conducting, and using evaluations. The war in Ukraine and in many other countries in the world concerns us as evaluators. Evaluation stands for objectivity, transparency, truth through appropriate assessments of political measures. 
It can only operate in an environment with institutions of democratic order. We, as evaluators, have a special responsibility to further support democracy through our work. IPDET aims to contribute to develop evaluation capacities globally so that evaluators all over the world shall stand up for a free democratic basic order and back victims of terror and tyranny. We stand strong with our Ukrainian fellows and everybody suffering from autocratic or totalitarian oppression and aggression. The coming two weeks, an intensive program lies ahead of us, starting with the core course on fundamentals of evaluation, followed by a week of specialized workshops in which you will tailor and deepen the learning, taught by renowned international faculty. In addition to joint learning in both large and small groups, the program includes networking events and more to enable interaction with other participants and with experts in the field. One big asset of IPDET is the variety of its participants. You come from different countries and different organizations with a passion for evaluation and the deep belief that evaluation can improve lives of people. At IPDET, we all come together in one place, learning and working jointly, exchanging experiences and ideas. This is quite unique and very exciting. What an enormous energy will be created. So let's see who you are and let me introduce you to yourself. So, we have this year in total 137 participants from 58 countries throughout the week. <laughs> And 79 participants are here in this room, hopefully all of you, all of the 97, and you're from 52 countries. So welcome to the core course. So you want to make a guess, which country is represented by most participants? Make a guess. Which country? Ghana. Here's Ghana. Another guess? Thailand. <laughs> Woo, welcome, Thailand. Savadika. <laughs> Second? Let's see. No, Ooh, still Switzerland. Mm, wow. Okay, that's okay, I guess. <laughs> then we have five participants each Germany, Italy, Mongolia, Netherlands, and Serbia. Still no Ghana in the picture. <laughs> Here we go, Ethiopia, Ghana, Philippines, Uganda, and the United States with four participants each in the core course. And we have Antigua, Barbuda, India, Kenya, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Spain, Sri Lanka, United Kingdom with three participants each. And then we have 16 countries with two participants and 22 countries with one participant. Incredible, right? So, and this is the core course. Looks a little bit different. Thailand still <laughs> eight. Where, where are you anyway? Where are you? Great. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Serbia in the core course. Woo, Serbi big Serbian delegation. Welcome. And then here, Ghana and Mongolia in the core course. Highly represented, of course. Where are the Ghana? Perfect. Very, very good. And Germany, Italy, Kenya, South Africa, Spain, and Sri Lanka, where are you? Good, welcome. So, South Asia, when we look at, at the regional distribution, yeah? So we have um, three participants from Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. Where are you? Oh, more than three years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then we have six participants from North Africa, for, uh, North America, from Canada and the United States. Where are you? Hello. Okay, welcome. Um, from Latin America and the Caribbean. Yes. Hola, bienvenidos. Antigua, Bobita, Brazil, Cuba, Ecuador, Me Mexico. Oh, yeah. Colum really? Okay, but Colombia, very good. 
Very good. <laughs> and we have nine participants from North Africa and the Middle East, Iran, Israel, Jordan, Lebanon. Where are you? Welcome. Thank you. Cool. Nice. 18 from East Asia and Pacific, Indonesia, Mongolia, Nepal, Papua, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Thailand. Where are you all? Everywhere. Very good. Welcome. And 21 from Sub-Saharan Africa. Here we go. Now, so all African countries, Ethiopia, Ghana, Kenya, Lesotho, Rwanda, Sierra Leone, South Africa, Uganda. Very, very good mixture. And finally, from Europe and Central Asia, Asia, 32 participants. Armenia. Hello, Armenia. Azerbaijan. Back there. Belgium. Good. France. Here we go. Germany. Georgia. Ireland. Italy. Pakistan. Welcome, Serbia, Poland, Spain, Switzerland, Ukraine, here you are, welcome, United Kingdom. A very, very good mixture, don't you think? And can you imagine this week, what are you going to do? Oh my God, you're going to interact with each other and learn so much from each other. And now, let's see, now I have a very, very big surprise for you and you're going to cheer. Have a look. Wow. Ah. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it myself. Like, oh my God, okay. So obviously, mm, women are fantastic in thinking evaluatively and uh, <laughs> keep learning and be engaged and so on. This is also interesting, right? So when we see where, 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 from which organizations you are coming from, and we can see that different government organizations, public administrations um, are mostly represented, followed by non-governmental organizations. And we have UN or UN specialized uh, agencies, other international or regional multilevel organizations and so on. So that's quite interesting. It's also a pretty good mixture. And that makes it also very interesting for you. You're not only coming from different countries, you're working in different positions and in different organizations. And you will all sit together and especially in the small groups and learn together. So now the road to Ibdet in Bern, who do you think has the most kilometers on her shoulder, on his shoulder, to when to come to Bern? What's the longest journey or the, um, in, in a distance? What? Japan? Is anybody here from Japan? Papua New Guinea? Oh, no, I, it was, oh, I, I, I <laughs> the, the presentation is the other way around. So, so that's, but still, this is pretty far, right? From Mongolia, where, where the Mongolian participants Far, was it far? How many hours? Mm -hmm. 10 hours. So then we have from Johannesburg, South Africa. <laughs> let's see, let's see, wait, wait, wait. Mexico. And we have Song of Thailand again. But okay, and now Lima. And finally. One more? Yeah. Where, where are you, Papua New Guinea? Are you here? Oh, are you, did you arrive? Are you, you <laughs> really? Where? Oh, gosh, yes. So we should have put it here. God, long, long, long trip. Long trip. Okay, now we want you to ask you to do something. This was going to happen many times during the week. You really have to do something. So can you put up your cell phone and see if this uh, code is working? If not, you can go to menti.com and enter the code. Here are the results. Okay, let's see. How many national language has Switzerland? Four. Which ones? And what's the fourth one? 
Romanisch, very good. Okay. How many tons of chocolate are produced in Switzerland per year? And you hopefully already had some chocolate already. Yes. So. <laughs> ah, oh, okay. Oh, aha. Mm, okay, it's a lot, right? But not that much <laughs> as you have expected. 180,000 tons and there are 18 chocolate factories in Switzerland. So, next question. How many fountains has Bern? Aha. Ah, oh. What? <laughs> Who are the six ones? Congratulations. You, you deserve a chocolate, I guess. <laughs> cool. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, we... I'm, I'm going to give you every morning, I'm, I'll explain later in the morning ritual, I give you a Swiss story of the day, because you're in Switzerland, you should learn a little bit about Switzerland. So that was a brief introduction. And regarding the fountains, fountains, the water which is running in the fountain is, is drinkable water. Tap water is drinkable water. This is really, really an advantage. Yeah. So wherever you go, take your cup, um, take your bottle, and just fill it up at the fountain and, and here also in, 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 in the tap water. So it's really, really nice to drink cool water, especially in the heat. You know that it's going to be hotter and hotter this week. <laughs> Congratulations, Scott. Okay, so now um, I'm very, very happy that, once again, Professor Christian Leumann, the president of the University of Bern, um, is with us, and um, he's going to give to you the welcome speech as the host of this location of the university, and I would like to invite Professor Christian Leumann for this speech. Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome again here at the University of Bern. It's a pleasure for me uh, to open this year's IPTED courses that you're going here, and maybe some of you I have seen before. I think uh, in the five years, essentially, I only missed two ones where um, we had no presence meetings. So welcome here again. I would like to uh, welcome also our mayor of the city of Bern, uh, and of course our organizer, Stefanie Krapp, who is actually doing with her crew all that uh, uh, is necessary in order to make this event uh, uh, enjoyable. And then I would actually like to welcome uh, Mr. Stockmann, Professor Stockmann, but obviously he just has caught in time COVID, and for this he will join later, essentially, this meeting, uh, maybe later this week or at least at the beginning of next week. So this reminds us a little bit to the fact that the uh, pandemic is not yet over. We're still living with it, and I hope the more time passes, the more we learn to live with it. Um, now, um, as I mentioned before, and as already Stephanie Krupp mentioned, um, we are happy to have you all here. And I know it's not so easy to get here because uh, traveling in this time of the year and under the, the, the circumstances that we have here, specifically in air travel, uh, I'm happy that you made it. Actually, I heard 10 hours from Mongolia. I imagine that Papua New Guinea, New Guinea must have been at least the double, if not more than that. And uh, this without, essentially, uh, this without um, the fact that you stuck somewhere in, in, in some airport uh, waiting for the next flight, which did not fly. So we are learning after the pandemic how to move again. Um, but we did everything we could do to make this event very enjoyable. Uh, so we organized the weather. Not also in Switzerland, we are actually coming up with uh, temperatures beyond 30, maybe 35 degrees, which is a little bit also a question that has to do with climate change. Now, the International Programme for Development, Evaluation and Training, IPDET, is of course an international training programme, and it is of the World Bank and was founded in 2001. Since 
2018, the program is led by the Centrum für Universitäre Weiterbildung of the University of Bern in, and co concomitantly also by the Centrum for Evaluation, CEVAL, uh, which is located at the University of the Saarland in Saarbrücken. Both institutions do this in partnership with the Independent Evaluation Group of the World Bank, and I'm happy that all these exponents and people are actually here today. Um, we only had a virtual program in 2020 and 21, and um, of course, um, I think it's a, another quality of the meeting that we can now be together again here, uh, meet each other, talk to each other, and um, do this in sort also of an atmosphere which is uh, not as strictly linked to screens uh, and, and rectangles, but more to faces and interaction of persons. Um, the University of Bern is a grant recipient of the World Bank IPTET since uh, 21, and it receives for this 1.4 million US dollars for two years to finance scholarships, evaluation, community building and further measures in different regions of the world. The World Bank has already assured two more years of financial support and we are very happy that we could make this happen. IPTET uh, aims to provide managers and practitioners in the field of evaluation with the tools required to evaluate policies, programs and projects at local, national, regional and global levels as well as to commission, manage, and especially the use of evaluations for decision-making. The idea is to reach ministries and authorities in developing countries, but also professionals at development banks in the nonprofit or foundation sector. The UN from bilateral development agencies, universities, or the private sector. Professional evaluation is getting more and more important as the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development made it compulsory to all nations to evaluate their contributions. The University of Bern is a key player in offering programs in the science of evaluation. At our Center for Continuous Education, we provide courses on the Master of Advanced Studies, the Diploma of Advanced Studies, and the Certificate of Advanced Studies level. Hosting the annual IPDET meeting is also, I, I also, I always want to say IPDET, but then I realize that it doesn't have much to do with IP, so um, I, I'm trying hard to call it IPDET in, for the rest of the time being. Hosting the annual IPDET meeting is also an opportunity for us to strengthen our international network and visibility on a global level. As research-intensive university, we are driven by scientific interest and, social and societal needs, and we strongly endorse interdisciplinary research on all levels to make the most value out of our eight faculties, encompassing all major academic fields. The University of, the university of Bern recognizes its ethical responsibility and shares its main vision knowledge generates value. In our strategy 2030, we concentrate on five major key areas in research and teaching. Three of them fit perfectly with the goals of the IPDET program. These are sustainability, intercultural knowledge, and politics and administration. In the field of sustainability, we aim at initiating transformations in line with the UN 2030 Agenda, for example, with the Interdisciplinary Research Center for Development and Environment, CDE. The CDE engages in social learning and co-production of knowledge in several world regions, invests in long-term partnerships, and connects local realities to global debates. Together with the Wyss Foundation and the Canton of Bern, we founded the Wyss Academy for Nature in 2020, which aims at collecting data from climate and biodiversity science to provide together with local people concrete solutions for the future sustainable land use under the premises of climate change 
in four defined areas on four continents. Another major aspect of our strategy is intercultural knowledge. In our globalized world, understanding and accepting the different cultures and religions are key for future life in peace. Our university, therefore, places a high value on intercultural knowledge and invests considerably into encouraging the dialogue between global partners. The third major topic, of course, is politics and administration. It touches upon the fact that we are localized in the capital of Switzerland. With research and teaching in the fields of law, economics and social sciences, we fulfill political and administrative needs for the local and national public authorities, just as the IPDET does on the global level. With this, uh, I will come to the end, and I would like to thank the Independent Evaluation Group of the World Bank for choosing us as a location of the IPDET program. I also thank the uh, Center for Evaluation of the Saarland University and Professor Bernhard Reinhard Stockmann for the excellent collaboration. And last but not least, we thank also the city of Bern for providing the liquid ingredients for this evening's happy hour. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Christian Leumann, for these warm welcoming words. And uh, we really highly appreciate that you're here this morning once again and that you are hosting IPDET at the University of Bern and that we are able to occupy this whole building for two weeks, which is really fantastic. So. So the University of Bern is located in Bern, obviously, and we highly appreciate your presence today, Alec von Grafenried, Mayor of Bern, and I would like you to invite to give your welcome speech. Well, dear participants, dear Christian, dear Stephanie, it's a great pleasure to have you here. Welcome to Bern. Uh, Bern is not only uh, Switzerland's political capital city, but Bern is also Switzerland's chocolate capital city. So uh, <laughs> if you heard now that uh, there are uh, 200,000... Oh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, 200,000... Uh, 200,000 tons of chocolate. Um, 50,000 tons of chocolate are produced in Bern. Toblerone chocolate, every, every single bar of Toblerone chocolate is produced in Bern. This is 50 million kilo of chocolate. <laughs> so it's uh, 500 million bars of Toblerone chocolate. And uh, wherever you uh, eat a or buy a, a Toblerone chocolate in Papua New Guinea or Ulaanbaatar or Lima, uh, it is produced here uh, in Bern with cocoa from Ghana, <laughs> basically from Ghana. <laughs> so, uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I thank you all to participate in the, the IPTET uh, program, and I think evaluating a program or project is one of the most important steps in the overall uh, process because evaluating projects helps us to learn and to grow. I believe very much in evidence-based uh, politics, and I believe very much that we should have evidence-based concepts, but it is even more important afterwards to evaluate uh, the successes of, of those uh, conceptions, whether they were successful, yes uh, or no. I'm a politician, I'm the mayor of this beautiful city uh, of Bern. <clears throat> Switzerland as a country tends to be a rather conservative country. The cities as the city of Bern tend to be rather uh, close to a progressive agenda. So I myself uh, am a mayor of the Green Party. Uh, and the Green Party and the city of Bern as a whole is very open uh, has a very open migration agenda, for instance, uh, has a very 
uh, open agenda to uh, international collaboration and has a very open agenda to sustainability goals in general. Um, <clears throat> The problems, so Bern is a very small city, so, so Bern is not a mega city. You, uh, many of you come from, from mega cities, Bern is a very small city. So you tend to, to say, well, problems in small cities are small and problems in big cities are very big. But uh, which is very uh, surprising is that the problems in all cities all over the world uh, are mostly the same. So number one problem often uh, is uh, the problem of housing, and then we have the problems of uh, transports. How, how do you get all the transports done? Uh, public transports, how, have you, how, how is the energy uh, approvision? How is the water approvision? And how far are we getting in circular economy? So uh, whether it's small cities or big cities, the problems in all cities all over the world are mostly um, the same. And I think uh, Bern, and this was, uh, <coughs> this was mentioned by, by Stephanie before, uh, Bern has some very nice experiences in, uh, in water history. So the city of Bern, whenever you uh, stroll through the, the old town of Bern, you may notice that in the middle of the old town, and you have it in, in, in the lower part of the old town, you will see it, that there's uh, fluid water. So this water uh, was led into the old town city of Bern 800 years ago. So from 800 years, we still have the old water provision uh, system and also wastewater treatment system in the old town of Bern. So this is a very uh, sustainable uh, example for building uh, cities and for maintaining uh, cities over uh, the years and the fountains, of course, are, are the, the, the signal of this uh, water provision. But we also have our greatest success story uh, in envir environmental uh, politics in the water treatment. When I was a little boy, and th that was a long time ago, I'm, a, I'm an old man now, I, I will be 60 next, next month, so uh, this is very marking to me. Uh, so <clears throat> when I was a little boy, swimming in the river was prohibited uh, because of water pollution, of course. And then in, in uh, 1967 and 1972, Switzerland took the decision uh, that this should come to an end and that we'll, we will uh, clean our uh, wastewaters. And from then, Switzerland built a system of uh, wastewater treatment plants all over the, the, the country. And uh, when you walk by the river now, it's not drinkable water, but it's almost drinkable water. And, and when you uh, swim in the river and you zip uh, some water, uh, it, will, it, will not, <laughs> it will not kill you. <laughs> no, but you, you can easily drink a glass of water off the river and, uh, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's okay. It's no, no danger. It's no, it will not be no harm. Uh, for you, and that's a, that's a, a really great success story. We don't have uh, so many uh, great success stories, but water treatment, wastewater treatment uh, in Switzerland is is one of the success stories, and we uh, should have many, many more uh, of those uh, success stories uh, to uh, come closer to uh, the the UN SDGs. Currently, however, we experience some difficult times. The pandemic is over or is not so much over, we don't know yet. Uh, and we have, uh, again, a war in Ukraine and uh, in other countries, uh, resulting in rise, rising prices worldwide and uh, challenging all countries uh, worldwide quite um, heavily. And of course, the impact hits poorer countries heavier than uh, others, as it's often uh, the case. So uh, we have to, <clears throat> it is uh, imperative for world leaders to address the current problems as a whole and to find sustainable solutions, helping especially those most uh, in need. And uh, <clears throat> Ukraine, of course, is in war. We should, we should, uh, we should condemn uh, those who, who brought the war over. And I think uh, in Europe, we were... Uh, uh, 
pretty far away from fascism for a long time, but uh, we, we live fascism uh, now and we, we live uh, fascist leaders in, uh, in Russia, which is, uh, uh, which is not a good news uh, to the world to have uh, fascism back because I think the challenges of the world are, are big enough and are challenging enough, so uh, we should not uh, have additional problems uh, by some uh, frustrated elderly men in, um, in Russia. So we were having uh, last week a Lugano recovery uh, conference uh, and we were talking about uh, recovery. And I think uh, after a war, you should not say that the war is a chance, but after a war, you get the chance to, uh, to build up uh, a new system. And I think uh, Ukraine deserves to have uh, a new system because like many other countries, the governance in Ukraine is maybe not uh, the very best. Ukraine is, uh, is uh, not quite advanced in uh, anti-corruption uh, uh, struggle. So uh, a recovery in Ukraine may help to eliminate uh, the worst corruption uh, in, in Ukraine. And we were mainly talking about that in, in, in Lugano and the Lugano principles will help Ukraine to um, install even a better system uh, after, um, uh, after the war. And I uh, hope very much that this will be the case very, very uh, soon. So to make smart and sustainable decisions, leader in the, leaders in the world have to rely on experts like you are, or like you are going to be after those three weeks, uh, as I hope, uh, experts that can evaluate policies and programs and that can make solutions uh, even smarter. Experts should advise leaders in decision making and I'm very glad that you all joined the IPTET uh, program and that you will be a better expert in your field after its completion. So I wish you a very good course, very good three weeks here in Bern. Enjoy your stay uh, in Bern. Bern is very glad to have you here and uh, I hope you will have a, a very nice experience here in Bern. Thank you very much and uh, all the best for the next three weeks. Thank you so much, Alec von Grafenried, Mayor of Bern. And uh, we highly appreciate your presence also from Professor Leumann. And as you can see, the IPDAT and that you are being here has a high value for the city of Bern and the University of Bern. So thank you so much. High round of applause again for your being here. And both have to leave, but uh, they will be back next year, definitely. <laughs> And, when, of course, Professor uh, Leumann also already mentioned it, um, tonight we have our welcome reception and we will definitely raise a toast to Alec von Grafenried and to the city of Bern because they provide us with a nice glass of white wine. So thank you very much for that. <laughs> so, the partners... Um, a couple of times we mentioned or you heard um, Center for Evaluation and uh, the Center for Continuing Education at the University of Bern. Well, let's explain you a little bit more about the setting um, of uh, IPDET. Who's implementing IPDET? Who are the partners? So the University of Bern, represented by the Center for Continuing Education and together with the Center for Evaluation from Saarland in Germany, in partnership with the Independent Evaluation Group and the Global Evaluation Initiative of the World Bank, are implementing IPDAT. For 20 years, the Center for Continuing Education has been conducting professional interdisciplinary continuing education programs and evaluation that range from one-day courses to a two-year Master of Advanced Studies program covering a broad spectrum of topics and formats in evaluation. Also for 20 years, CEVAL has been a globally active research, consulting, and educational institution that combines classical evaluation work with theory and method development, as well as education and continuing education in evaluation. CEVAL is involved in two evaluation master's programs, one of them in English, which is offered in a blended learning format. 
The two institutes complement each other perfectly with regard to the further development and implementation of the IPDAT program, which is now being conducted in this constellation for the fifth time on behalf of the Independent Evaluation Group of the World Bank. IPDAT is a core partner of GEI, the Global Evaluation Initiative. The goal of GEI is to reduce fragmentation in the evaluation capacity development space to generate synergies through partnering. And let me thank GEI for providing a grant which enables us to finance scholarships that permits the program a need-based orientation. The scholarships made it possible that 36 of you could come to Bern and participate in the program. So thanks a lot to the sponsors of the GEI Trust Fund. Well, I cannot express how thankful and happy we are that you all arrived and that the program finally starts. It was worth all the efforts in the past months. Who made that happen? Let me introduce you to my wonderful team. So please come up, not to the stage, but please come, come in front and give them a big applause because they worked very, very hard. Wow, so much applause already at the beginning, so let's wait uh, two weeks. But um, seriously, as you can imagine, um, it's really, really exhausting. It's a lot of work to organize a program like this behind the scenes. And, um, and look at them, they also look very nice with the shirts. They, they will wear those only today, I guess, because it's going to be very warm. And you know them by now, and I will introduce them to you by name, because they will be here for you for the next two weeks. So, this is Matthias Edel, he's head of the team, he's running the show behind the scenes. Soara <laughs> Santoyo. The registrar, you probably all communicate. <laughs> so much back and forth, and she can tell so many stories. Oh my God. <laughs> Hopefully, you all ha you, you're having fun still. And isn't it, isn't it incredible? You know, you, now you get to know the people. You were communicating all the time, so now you're here, and this is, this is just wonderful. Then we have Vanessa Krieger for communications and marketing. She will also support the core course in the first week and facilitate uh, workshops. We have Laszlo Chentma Jai from Ceval also. He is with us also since 2018 um, supporting the program. He will support in this first week the core course specifically. Matt has also been with us with, uh, two since 2018. And somebody else, now I'm switching to the back, which is great, Maru Movahedi is with us again. <laughs> Maru is an artist, but she's joining IPDET every year except of the past <laughs> years and we are happy that she is with us again. She's from Iran um, but she's studying in uh, or you know, she's doing her PhD in, 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 Switzerland, in Switzerland. So glad to have you with us again Maru. And Liora Mosa she's joining this year so she's new to the team. A warm welcome to Liora. So they all have their specific tasks, of course, um, and Matt is guiding them perfectly. Um, but of course, whenever you have a problem, a question, if something is going wrong, and, and please just go ahead and approach them, and they will do whatever they can to solve the problem, to help you, to assist you, and, and so on. If it's something really, really bad, then you should go and speak with me, but um, we do not expect that, uh, that things will, will go wrong or will, will not be to your satisfaction. So we are doing our best to have your stay as enjoyable as possible, as memorable as impossible. Um, at least they do their best from the organizational side 
And later I will tell you what we are going to do from a content side. So thank you very much and um, let's, let's have a good two weeks of, of work. So, there's already the slide with the core course. What's happening now? <laughs> Candice, please come up. So, you're all here for the first week for the core course on fundamentals of evaluation. You know from the website, from the welcome guide, there will be four instructors teaching. Today, you can see the creme de la creme of the, of the core course instructors for today. So this is Candice Morkel. Um, she's been with us in 2019 already, so she is um, a very important part of the core course instructors. She is the director of the CLEAR Anglophone Africa Center. And she's going to introduce you to CLEAR a little bit. And I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. And, and then we go ahead with introducing you to the core course. Thank you very much, Steffi, for that very kind introduction. Good morning, everybody. I can hear that there's a fantastic vibe already, so I'm so happy. Steffi's so good at this. It makes us all calm, you know, because it's very scary being in front of all of you here. You are all professionals. We saw your profiles, and we're like, okay, should you not be teaching us here on this side? <laughs> so I'm the director of the Center for Learning on Evaluation and Results, Anglophone Africa. We are actually one of six global centers. Um, there's a, a clear Francophone Africa center that's based in Dakar in Senegal, um, there's the Clear Lucifone Africa and Brazil Center. I know there's somebody from Brazil here. I don't know if you know them, but you should know them. They do fantastic work. Um, there is also the Center in Delhi in India. And there's a Center in China. And which one did I forget? Mexico, Latin America, and the Caribbean. Um, work in progress. Um, it's in abeyance right now, but there are some plans to have it uh, reignited very soon again. So what do we do as the CLEAR initiative? We've been around since 2011, all of these centers, and we work on all parts of the evaluation ecosystem. So um, just a few examples of what we do. I know there's somebody here from Ghana, for example. In Ghana, we've assisted with the national evaluation policy process. We've assisted with that. Um, we also work with the Ghana Institute of Management and Public Administration, and we sought, supported them in their postgraduate uh, diploma program in M&E. I know there's somebody here from Uganda. We work with um, Timothy Lubanga and his team from the Office of the Prime Minister, um, and we work on also the policy environment, but a lot of training, for example, rapid evaluations. I know there's a team here from South Africa, Department of uh, um, Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation, we also work in um, supporting the evaluation technical working group. So those are just a few examples. So every aspect of the evaluation ecosystem we basically work on. And that is Clear Anglophone Africa. So am I interviewing you or are you interviewing me? <laughs> Ask the question so long. So I'm sure you want to know a little bit more about us. You will do the rest of the week, but just to get, get you a, give you a sense of who we are, we're going to ask ask each other a few questions. So the first question is, Steffi, what is your motto in life? <laughs> yeah, thank you for this great question. <laughs> uh, my motto in life is you cannot change the past, but you can enjoy the present and you think about the future. So, Candice, what about you? What is your motto of life? I love that because it actually links with what I've been thinking about. And I mean, there's, uh, I don't have one motto, I have a few principles, but one key thing is about living a life of purpose and with purpose. And I guess it's also about saying what is meaningful in the moment. So every moment, whether it is something that you're not enjoying uh, or you think it's a bad day or a bad thing that's happening or it's a fantastic day, all of these threads of your life are woven together if you're living a life of purpose and of meaning and every moment then becomes meaningful. And that is so much related to evaluation when you think about the purpose. 
Yes, because I forgot the question, second question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so what inspires you then about evaluation? Yeah, I'm, I'm an evaluator by heart. So I'm, and, and I enjoy it so much um, when I see all your, you being here and we are going to have a very interesting week because it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to teach a little bit, but at the same time, I know, gosh, there's so much experience and so much passion in the room. So this is just, for me, the experience with meeting other evaluators who have the same mindset, um, this evaluative thinking attitude, and we all want to do good evaluations for the best of the people. Yeah. What about you, Candice? That's so true, Steffi. And I think that for me, what excites me about it is that if evaluation is done well, there's something that shifts in people when they, when they are open to the findings, when they're open to seeing what evaluators are producing. And that moment of that shift happening, I think, is what energizes me and inspires me. I mean, even in the moment in an evaluation, when you're doing the theory of change and you see kind of the light bulbs going on and people are like, oh, how did we plan this program even? And so for me, that's the exciting part that you can really bring about change through evaluation. And in fact, every step of the way of an evaluation is actually a learning process for people, not just even the findings. Yeah. And I think the last one is, what, what excites you about IPDET? <laughs> yeah, why, why, are we all, why are we all here? And why do we value this so, so much? And it, the answer is pretty simple, as when I introduced you to yourself, basically. So many countries represented, so many different organizations. Um, you work in, in different positions um, with, with different challenges um, in, in the field of evaluation. So it's pretty unique. It's an, a really a unique event where you all come together and, and you will realize that when you're working in the small groups, um, it's so enriching um, the discussions, and that is, yeah, that is where, what it makes also so much fun to be here. And um, we will have also some fun. We provided a couple of nice things for you because it's not only the learning, but what supports learning is um, to have a, a good time together. And we hopefully can, or we we provide, we will provide you a, like a, a nice. A program which surrounds the learning and that means we will sing and dance together and do all kind of crazy stuff. <laughs> that is totally Steffi. So she's really hard on us. So the rest of us are kind of like very like, you know, muted and we're like, no, we just want to teach and you know, the course must, and then she's like, no guys, can you just do other didactical approaches? We can't just sit there and tell people stuff. So she's, she's the one who motivates us to do the different and exciting things. And um, I think the program is, is really good in that way. Um, yeah, but wait for her, wait for her. <laughs> So the thing about IPTED for me is that I always wonder, and I think I'm always surprised, like people always clamor to get into IPTED, and it's, it shouldn't be a surprise anymore, but it's been that way for like, what, 20, 20 years it's been on the, or 10? 2001 IPTED? So it's 20 years, IPTED's going for 20 years, so it's always been um, this perfect little capsule. So I was thinking about, you know, multivitamins, right? So multivitamins, when you take them, they're really good for you, but it doesn't mean you don't go and have healthy meals to, to like make sure you have a healthy body. So in these three weeks, we're not going to create evaluators. Like You still have to go and do other stuff to supplement you know, what's being taught you. But it's like the perfect little capsule of like everything that you, even if, if you're a beginner, it's fantastic because it gives you all the pieces and the parts that you need to go to know so that you can go back and say, okay, I need to deepen my knowledge here. But even if you're seasoned, it's kind of like a refresh, like, ah, okay, now I recall this, or this is why I do this, or let me share my experience that actually helps somebody else along their evaluation journey. So that's what excites me about IPDET. Thank you so much, Candice. And um, yeah, there are two more instructors missing at the moment, at least. And you already heard Reinhard Stockmann. He is still recovering from COVID, you know, so we all thought, my God, why? Why you? Um, but this happens and um, he is recovering well. So he will definitely, or that's at least the plan, he will join us on Thursday morning. So we kind of restructured a little bit the modules. Um, not too much, and it will not hurt. We will explain a little bit later. And Wolfgang Meyer, the fourth co-course instructor, he will join this 
afternoon after lunch. So he will be with us in, uh, in respectively in, this, in the group work. Um, yeah, we already kind of touched uh, the journey of uh, evaluation, but uh, you might have noticed this picture here. We are in Switzerland. <laughs> this is the Matterhorn, right? So um, the Matterhorn is almost 4,500 4, meter high, one of the highest mountains in Switzerland. And I learned that it's an African, uh, African mountain. How come? We were in Switzerland. Why is it an African mountain? Oh, it has the shape of Africa. Oh, this would be, yeah. That is so interesting. <laughs> That's so like, ah, I didn't see that before. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Aha, there's a similar one. Oh, interesting. Okay. But of course, the northern and southern continents, they pushed together like 15 million years ago. And, uh, and then the Alps uh, remained. And uh, this is also a result of those pushing together, right? And for the first time, the mountain was climbed in 1865 by Edward Wimper. Seven went up. How many came down? Four. Right? So for the first time, they, were, um, they didn't make it down, but at least four went up. And as you can see, we tried to kind of simulate those difficult steps up to the mountain um, in comparison to the difficult steps of an evaluation. So, Candice, what, what is so similar between a mount, climbing a mountain and doing an evaluation? So I think it's a really great analogy because it's like a journey, right? Um, if you think about all of the, I mean, I don't mountain climb. I'm not from a city that has mountains, but I'm from a country that has, I don't know if anybody knows Cape Town and Table Mountain. So I've walked up like the hiking trail there. That's about the most that I've done. Um, I don't know if you guys do hiking, but even hiking and mountain climbing it requires preparation, right? I mean, you can't be, you can't decide today I'm going to climb up the Matterhorn. There's a lot of preparation that, go, that goes into it. And that, for example, can be likened to the planning stage. So all of the elements that go into planning, for example, is the beginning of the journey, right, Steffi? Yeah, or it's like a base camp, right? All the, the, the really difficult climbings, they have a base camp and they check um, the environment, they check uh, what is going on, they check the weather, they check their equipment and, and whatever it is, and they check which route they should go. So they all do this really careful planning in advance. And also with evaluation, actually you have to read it from here, <laughs> we start from here. You know, you identify what are you going to evaluate? Um, you need to know the stakeholders. Um, you, you need to know the purpose um, of, of the program. What is the logic of the program and what exactly are you going to evaluate? So you clarify all those different things, purpose, objectives, the criteria, and so on. And um, with the framing and scoping, where here you're at the, already at the Hörnligrad, you already started, some kind of. And in the framing and scoping of an evaluation, you first, you really have to check, is, is the evaluation possible? You have to do like an evaluability assessment. So it's the same with um, hikers. They need to check, is this really possible, what we intend to do? Um, so let's have a closer look at it. Let's let's gather some some more data and maybe talk uh, to another guide. He climbed the day before. Yeah. So get some information so that you know a little bit more about what you are going to do. Yeah. 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 The other interesting thing about this picture is that, like, one would imagine or, or like that it's a straight line, right? You just walk up and then you come down again. But actually, um, mountain climbing is not like that. And evaluation's not like that either. So as you kind of see, step one is over there, but then we go around and we actually have step two over there. And so conditions can change. Um, the environment, the enabling or the environment that disables the evaluation, that can actually have an, an influence on the evaluation as well. Um, we're currently busy with an evaluation that 
is supposed to be an impact evaluation um, that has baseline was supposed to be in March, April, and then end line in September. But the program, the intervention hasn't started yet because they have a problem with the distribution of um, a particular item that needs to go to the schools for that program to start. So you can imagine we're already in August almost, and um, you know, when are we going to actually start that evaluation? So much like hiking and mountain climbing, it's not a straight path upwards. All of these issues, the framing, the scoping, the, what, and the conditions that might change actually influence whether it's a straight line. And normally evaluations are not just a straight line. So theoretically, you'll have all the steps. And that's what you will learn this week as well, the steps, the sequential steps. But evaluation doesn't work that way in real life. No, and as Candice said, the conditions, the environment, the context um, is different, can, might vary, and you might decide to descend. Um, uh, it, it's better to descend than climbing and climbing, and you, and you realize, well, you, you, you cannot make it at all. So better to descend, rethink it again, and start anew. So that might happen. And um, what's What's absolutely important, obviously, when you're climbing a mountain like uh, the Matterhorn is you only experienced climbers can do that. So maybe you can um, talk to other people here, find some more uh, information, but do the actual climbing. And when you go here to sampling, data collection, data analysis and so on. So only evaluators who know about what they are doing, who have the knowledge, who have experiences in different methods, in sampling methods, in analysis and so on, they should do it. Maybe not so experienced ones can accompany them, but still the ones who know the field of work, they should do it. Otherwise it will be dangerous, obviously. And then I think reaching the summit, the top, and then you've done your evaluation and you've got the report and you're so excited. You're going to present to the client, to the stakeholders, and everything happened perfectly. And what happens is it doesn't land that well. Like the terrible evaluation, go put it on the shelf. So it's kind of like, not to overuse the analogy, right? But let's say you get to the top of the mountain and it's a terribly cloudy day and you can't take the beautiful picture of the Alps and it's kind of like a downer, right? But then other things can happen as well. You can actually have a situation where you think, ah, you know, it didn't go that well. You don't, the, the, the findings are not that great. You don't think it's going to be accepted. And then you land up having, you know, a client or, a, or partners who are really open to learning and they want to use that evaluation. Um, and that's that amazing summit where you've looked at utilization properly. You've involved your partners in the evaluation and they have the sense of how do we then correct, course correct, how do we use this evaluation to improve going forward. I like this, to have an amazing summit when your evaluation is actually going to be used. This is just really nice, <laughs> Candice. Yeah, so basically this is what's going to happen during the whole week. We will guide you through this journey to this climbing up the mountain with the various steps, starting from the planning, going over to the implementation, and then the reporting and the use. So that by Friday, you should really know, okay, this is, now I know this is evaluation. Um, this is the purpose of evaluation. These are different functions. And these are the different steps I should go when I'm planning um, an evaluation. And I should be able to know how to implement an evaluation. A week seems to be long, but of course it's not. As you can imagine, there are so many things to say. And when we um, designed or reviewed uh, the curriculum of the core course again, we were still like, okay, no, this is too much. Now, how can we cut that? No, no, this is still, again, too much. But, but it's so important. We have to tell them about it. It's so important. It's like, no, we cannot do everything. We cannot go in detail. But what it's important from our perspective is that you get the full picture. And then next week, for those who are staying um, two weeks, um, you are going to deepen a couple of con uh, some contents in different workshops. And of course, you, you're not 
finished by Friday, of course, you're going to apply, to learn a little bit more, to exchange, to have practical work and so on. So it's still going on and going on. And I'd like this morning, Candice, and I said, oh, no, you don't stop with uh, evaluation uh, at, at some point. It's really an ongoing process and there are so many new things to cover. But our aim is that in this week you get a good overview and you know also in which content you need to deepen your, your knowledge further when you are back home um, or next, next year when you come back and so on. So that, that's our aim. And uh, what's yeah. next? What's next? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's talk still a little bit about, um, let's say, like an overarching perspective on the core course. I would like to provide you. So, why are we all doing this? Overarching question on on the meta level. Why are we all doing this? And why are you here, full week, core course, evaluation? My God, it's not solving all problems in the world, but still, evaluation serves some purpose, especially in those times. So we are not only living in turbulent times, but perhaps this is already the beginning of a new era, and as it looks, not a turn for the better. Even if one might think the corona pandemic, war, uh, pandemic is over, it is not, and the incalculable risk of dangerous mutations remain. Wars have the world on tenterhooks. One of them takes place in the middle of Europe, only 1,500 kilometers away from here, with the potential to mutate into a third world war. The climate crisis is another global danger that threatens the world. So these three factors alone are leading to growing poverty, migration, conflicts about scarce resources, and so on. A political characteristic of this turning point is the fact that the lines of conflict no longer run predominantly in an east-west direction between capitalist and communist system, or in a north-south direction, but are characterized by competition between democratic versus authoritarian or even dictatorial systems. And it is precisely here that the question arises as to what role evaluation should take in this newly constituted world. Well, in our opinion, these days evaluation is more important than ever. What we need to know now is a, no, need now is a policy that is guided by facts and decisions based on evidences. If we are convinced that the COVID pandemic, wars and climate crisis can be influenced by people, then we need governments that are committed to the common good and do not decide and steer according to interest-driven clientelism or ideological doctrines, but based on facts. One supplier of facts, among others, as you know, is evaluation. It can contribute to strengthening good governance as well as democratic structures. Evaluation is often applied to enhance accountability, to review what has been achieved, and the impacts deriving from interventions. Evaluation opens up learning potentials for program management and government decisions. That is a good thing and that is necessary. However, evaluation can do more. Evaluation also has a democratic and enlightening function. If evaluation results are made transparent, they could provide legitimacy for political decisions, open up opportunities for public dialogue and participation processes, and help to achieve empowerment. Only in democratic societies, governments are accountable to their citizens and have to legitimize themselves because their power is subject to a time limitation. Although evaluation could play an important role in precisely this form of government, it is nevertheless little used for this democracy-promoting function. 
To avoid evaluation ending up as a technocratic function of administration and management, it is important to know the full potential and the whole spectrum of possible applications. This is exactly what IPDAT wants to contribute to. We want to get to know the full potential of evaluation as far as this is possible in a one-week course. But we want to use this chance to contribute to creating a better world by means of evaluation. So let's have an enriching, interesting week of the core course, lots of learning, lots of exchange for the better of the people and to have the full potential of evaluation evolved.